this is Conzel here. So today I'm going to do the analysis for Kokomi full EM build in an electro charge comp or fireworks comp with Venti, Fisher, Beidou and Kokomi. So in my, my previous two videos we did for the uh, Sarah Raiden replacing these two electro characters. We were able to proc consistently for multi-target as well as single target. So that's very nice. This time around, we are going to try out for Fisher and Beidou. But if you saw my community post, you, you saw that I already updated. I gave a mid update before I did this video, or an interim update before this video, where the multi targets are still okay, but the single is kind of tough to get it proc consistently. And I'll talk more about that as a summary portion later when I talk about the single target. I won't be showing frame analysis for the single target because I did a lot of runs. And I'll talk more about why we won't be showing the free analysis. So first off, let's look at the multi. For the multi target, we'll look at the run itself. At this point in time, uh, there will be mainly two EM figures that you will see. Actually, there, in total there will be four different types, but I think in this run, mainly two. My e Kokomi's EM right now is 9800 because I managed to get an upgrade on my 4 star EM goblet to 5 star now. Yeah, so we have more EM, so my EM damage instead of 9510 from the previous videos is 9800. You also see a figure with triple one six one, which is co which is uh with C6 Beidou's effect where she does a minus 15% resistance to electro. Okay. So without further ado, let's start the video itself. I will do the normal run, the, the run at the normal playback, then we'll do the frame analysis after. So Fisher's Oz is out, Beto's Burst, Venti's Burst, and Kokomi. Okay. So there's a whole lot of figures going on here. Imagine how difficult it was to do the frame analysis. Okay, uh, I'll start the normal playback here because I'm only going to do frame analysis for the first wave. Because the first wave is where we use our Beto's Burst as well as my Fisher's uh, Oz. So, I think it's all in all, it's not too bad. We did clear the run in 22 seconds first wave. I think it's okay. Oh, it's very obvious clear. So let's move on to the frame analysis itself. Okay, so this is the frame analysis. Uh, we'll start with this portion here where I already have Oz up, I already have Venti's burst, as well as Beto's burst up. And we just switch to Kokomi. So first cast of the elemental skill. Do you see the figures that are slightly darker? They have not fully appeared yet. I there's one with triple one six one. That's a nine eight zero zero. There's another nine eight zero zero. Plus one more nine eight zero right beside it. It's a bit overlapped by the other figure, and you have triple one six one. So remember, triple one six one is with C six Beto's uh, effect, the resistance reduction. So I have five lines here. I have five procs on six enemies. Also, the first wave is looking really good. Or rather the first tick. One five. Okay, so one denotes the first tick, five denotes the number of props or number of damage figures that you see. Okay, so we have one five here. We'll move on to the next tick. Uh, we're doing things a bit differently here. Previously vi previous video. Uh okay. Anyway, let me just pause the video. For the previous video, what happened was that uh we only started counting from the second cast. But for this video itself, I want to just do uh, the whole wave itself, the whole wave of 6 mods itself. Okay. Either way, it doesn't matter because the point is about consistency of the props. For example, X number of props out of Y number of total props. Okay. Or ticks. So, this second, second electro charge figures, I'm not able to find. Because the damage fingers are really just way too together. And I believe it's because I was recasting my jellyfish. My jellyfish was not on 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 field to prop. So yeah, that's a bit of a waste. But if you notice there's a triple one six one figure. Uh let me just point you guys to it. Yes, it's here. There's a triple one six one figure here. I believe this is the third prop, not the second prop. Because we're at 950 now. 952 was the first prop. So 951 was the, was the one where we were recasting our jellyfish. 950, now this is the one where we cast we finished casting our jellyfish and we got the Thunder Fairy Proc as you can see from the cooldown. Okay, so triple one six one. 
that is the damage that we have here. I'm not able to find any other figures though. They are just way too together for me to make any sensible analysis. And trust me, my eyes were glued to the screen. I had to move my seat to do this analysis. Okay, so anyway, uh, I'm just put update here. We'll take it at the second tick that's no damage or no proc from Kokomi. Third, we have one proc, one damage figure. Let's move on to the next tick. Oh, wait, sorry, excuse me for that. Okay. Move on to the next tick. The next tick should be from her burst initial hit. E so many figures. But there are two figures, if you notice. There's a triple one six one here and another triple one six one that's uh, obscured by the timer. Okay. As for the other prop figures, I really really could not find them. I did see two Venti figures and one Fisher of Beto. But I couldn't find the last one. So anyway, two procs for this tick, the fourth tick of Electro Charge. Okay, we'll move on to the next tick now. There's a 9800. I know it's really, really hard to see, but there's a 9800 over here. Let me try to move back and forth. Ah, okay, that's 29800. Okay, I. Again, I can't find all of the props. So we don't know whether there's more than that. There's just way too many damage figures overlapping. But I. The key point of the video has been achieved, which is the fact that we want to show that she can proc consistently. Or rather, she can proc consistently with Fisher and Beidou as well for multi targets. So anyway, yeah, I'll take it that there's just two nine two nine eight zero zero figures here. So two procs on the fifth tick. I'm just trying to see if there's any other uh, procs, but yeah, I can't find it. But if you remember my uh, Venti Raiden figures, uh, this is a bit different in the sense that Venti Raiden, I actually have 4 damage figures per tick during the burst, during Animal's burst, Venti's burst. So, consistency is still higher on the Raiden side. <laughs> that 9800 figure, I believe, is still the previous one. Let's see, let's continue moving through the frames. Oh my god. Okay, I honestly do not know how to find the Electrash figure. I did see three Venti figures though. 1562 is Venti's e, uh, EM prop. 1779 is with uh, Beto's burst effect. Or rather the Beto C6 effect. So I found three of that. I can't adjust. I, I can't adjust the remaining two because one mod has died, so there's only five total left. First wave has six mobs or six enemies. So yeah, I hey, wait, 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 wait. I think I found it. There's a nine eight zero zero over there. No, tr wait. There's three nine eight zero zero actually. One, two, two together. And three. So not sure if I can find any others. Okay. So anyway, let us just uh, put down the test. I believe this is the next tick already. This should be the next tick already. Since we did saw three venti procs early year. Unless I was wrong about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think this is the seventh prop, seventh tick, while the previous tick we have zero. I could have just ignored that and just say that the sixth tick is uh, three, but I think we should be accurate here. So, we'll just take it that there, are, there were two 
waves that or ticks that we cannot account or find Kokomi props. Okay, now we only left with one guy, so it's much easier now. I don't think I will, I will write anymore because there's only one guy. I don't think I need to put any more text, but we see another proc 9800. We're actually going to call it proc consistently, I think. Okay, 8 dash 1, fine. Let's just write it. We, let's see, the energy charge figure this time. Yep, we got another 9800. Since it's one target, I think it's much easier to see. So I don't think we need to put a test. And a triple one six one. So total ten ticks. Out of ten. Two. Two without. I didn't write the, the, the last two since it's a single target. But basically there were ten ticks and uh, we did eight out of ten ticks. Okay? Eight out of ten ticks for multi-target. It's pretty good man. It's pretty good. So it's eighty percent consistency, and don't forget that there are multi damage figures. So if you factor that in, she definitely did more damage than say a prototype Amber or even a everlasting moon glow based on my previous math calculator. Okay, so that's the gist of it for this uh, multi target. Remember that is ten eight out of ten. Okay, not. 2 out of 8 please please listen to what I'm saying <laughs> okay yeah, sorry I did the free analysis analysis as a pre-recording so I don't have the chance to physically add the text now but you know what actually maybe I should okay let me just add that in so 9-1 10-1 okay so we have we have 10 ticks in total, 2 of the ticks like we couldn't find the, the damage figures but there were ticks with more than 1 so it, I think it will average out pretty nicely 2, let's see, 5, 1, 6, 10, 3, 13, 16, 16 across 10 so about 1.6 damage figures per tick and do you remember my math video where I talk about if we get 1 tick consistently 1 damage figure consistently per Per tick, which is per second, we will do more damage than a prototype Ember build, a R5 Mepa Mare build, HP build, as well as a Everlasting Moon Glow build. Oh wait, sorry, Everlasting Moon Glow is, if I did wrong, it's only if uh, it's more than two enemies. Wait, let me just double check. In fact, I can show you now. Okay, so this is the. Uh, comparison that I did previously. Ah, okay. So C6 R5 is the one that we compared to EM full EM targets. One full EM target is already better than the everlasting moon goal by about five percent. I know it's not much, but it's there. And don't forget that my comparison is based on one six six elemental skill. Okay. 166 because my basis of assumption here is that you don't need to invest in Nomad Tech Talents for a full EM build. Although I have mine at level 6 because... Uh, where should I put it? I need to do content. Yeah, so... Okay, next up would be the single target conclusion that I want to talk about. Uh, I'm not showing any frame analysis because the results are inconsistent. It ranges from 4 to 9 Kokomi props, unlike with Fenty Raiden, where it's consistently, more or less consistently higher. I tried other permutations, example Venti Fisher, Venti Beto, which means that when I say this, right, it means that I don't use Beto, Beto skill or burst. We need to try the rotation to try if we can get a more consistent prop. So, like guys, we don't use Fisher in this combination, and for this, we only use Fisher. We don't use Ven Venti's burst. We don't use Beto's, Beto's burst. Uh, likewise, Beto only Fisher Beto, Beto no Venti, or even casting Kokomi's E before Beto's burst or Venti's burst, for example. So I I really tried a lot of different permutations. 
I can tell you the results are even worse for some of this because it ends up with like two to nine procs with two happening for the for the permutations with no venti burst, which is the Fisher only beta only and Fisher beta no venti. Yeah. So yeah, results are really really bad, and I've tried my best to see if uh, I can find a rotation that works, but unfortunately I can't. So, but bear in mind, bear in mind, bear in mind that I have C six Fisher. The additional electro application from it may be too much. It may be the reason why my consistency, pro consistency, is affected. But unfortunately, I'm not able to test this. So it would be great if someone can test this and comment on the video. Yeah. With uh, Venti, Fisher, Beto, or cast all their stuff. Venti Spurs, Fisher skill without C6, Elemental skill without C6, Beto Spurs, and Kokomi. You see if you can get the uh, proc consistency to be higher. Because what we want. How should I put it? Well, we want the electro application to be there so that when we cast our Hydro, the Hydro will be the last hit. We also do not want too much electro application because too much electro application will just mean that the electro always ends up being the uh, last application right before the electro charge tick the timer. <laughs> so yeah, it's a bit complicated, but basically, I have a feeling that my C6 Fisher is the reason why my all-in combination combo did not work, which is uh, the original one here. That's my suspicion, but I can't confirm it without testing because I can't test it. Mihoyo, I don't know when Mihoyo will finally allow us the option to turn on or off or toggle constellations. I really, really hope that they will do that in future. Alright, so anyway, I'm not showing the frame analysis because if I show only the good or the bad run, people will take out of context. If I show both, the video will be too long. I don't want the video to be too long. So to conclude, full EM Kokomi with Venti, Fisher, and Beidou against a single target is unreliable in terms of the proc consistency. Use at your own risk. Okay, use at your own risk. I don't personally advise it. Even though against multi-target, it was a 8 slash 10 uh, proc consistency, which was very nice. Against single target, the it, it just varies too much. It varies from 4 to 9 procs. So, yeah. So that's my conclusion for a single target Venti Visha Beidou. If you want to use, still use this comb, you will still do well for multi-targets. It's just that against bosses, your, your Kokomi's EM props will fall off. Okay. Now, this led me to actually retest Venti, uh, Venti slash Raiden. Because the results were so inconsistent, I decided to retest uh, Venti Raiden. Okay. The results are better than Venti Fisher Beto. There was only one five prop in my rerun or retest, while the other three to four runs were seven to nine each. So my original one was eight ten, the previous video. So now we managed to get seven nine most of the runs, except for one that actually got five. But what this means is that although it's better, the variance factor is still there, even for Venti Raiden. Although majority were higher props, but you gotta bear in mind I tested about. 4-5 runs, so I might just be lucky on all of them. But the probability of being lucky on all of them is also kind of small. But it's possible. Okay? And this is not surprising, because of the way the EC timer work, works, if you do an additional dodge or cryo, or if you get cryo applied onto your character, for example, from the uh, Magu Kenki, the timing will change, the timing of your attacks will change, and thus the prod rate may change as well. So that's the tricky thing about EC. Changing your attack timing will change the consistency of your prod rate. Because it's entirely based on timer, not based on who uh, triggered the attack at that very instant per se. Although it does affect by a little, but yeah. If you miss the timing for that specific tick, even if you hit with your Hydro or Electro, you will not be the one doing the Electro Charge prop. That's just the way EC works. Okay? Why well, EC, I mean Electro Charged. So, my, I'm going to do a final conclusion of full EM Kokomi because I don't want to do any more full EM Kokomi related videos. 
because I think uh, we have done enough videos already. I don't want to be the Kokomi EM guy doing, I don't know, 10 plus EM Kokomi videos. No, that's not what I want to do. Okay. So I will say that EC, Electric Charge, is still pretty unreliable for one character to prop. So it's really up to your risk appetite. Personally, I will still use EM on her since I'm not too concerned on her as a healer. And if required, I already have a support set to convert her to pure support slash healer. And coupled with a second animal, EM animal character in the team, I'm confident most of the props will be high EM damage in the Electric Charge comp. So I'm not too worried about that. But, but... For most folks, however, you may not necessarily have a support set ready. So, I'll say this. If you do not have a backup set like I do, it can be, a, by the way, it can be from another HP base healer as well. But for me, I did create, I did upgrade a separate set for her. And if you do not have a full EM animal character like Venti, Kazuha, or Sokros, which shouldn't be the case for most folks, and if you do not have Sarah or Raiden, because remember, we said that single target Fisher Beto is not that great. Unless my testing were affected by C6 Fisher. Okay. And you don't like a team comp where you have higher damage potential against mobs but lower against bosses. Which again, I'm referencing back to the Fisher Beto. Okay, it's really Fisher Beto. But even uh, Venti Raiden, you do have a chance of getting lower props as well. So that inconsistency is still there. Okay, so if you like, don't if this all of this uh, if criteria you fulfills or applies for you, I would recommend HP build in that case because HP is just a safer safer option. While EM has a higher damage potential, but inconsistent at times, because even without her signature weapon and higher constellation on the EM build, I can do better damage than a R one everlasting moon glow, as per my math that I showed earlier. Okay, and if I am to be perfectly honest, guys, I while I was while I was while I was also doing my test today, I actually realized that my figures uh, above have some slight error, where when I changed it to correct the resistance error previously, the super conduct bonus was not included. But that's fine because I I I, I don't want to again update the figures and then say again that EM does more damage. I mean it does but it does them it does more than what I'm showing my figures but the figures right now already show very clearly that EM has a higher potential even against her signature weapon so long as you can proc consistently. I'm not even talking about doing a lot of procs. I'm just talking about proccing against one target consistently every second. Okay? So just for reference, my current 4-piece TOTM set with 39k HP does about 6k per hit, which is the support set I was talking about. It does about 6k per hit, while the EM props for my Kokomi is about 9.8k each, and don't forget that I'm doing normal attacks at 2k too. So every second, we do 2 normal attack plus 1 EM prop, if you're consistent enough. That's like almost 14k, while this is about 12k. So there is a higher damage potential, but it's not consistent. HP is your safest option if you want consistency. And also, it's also easier to farm for HP artifacts compared to EM artifacts. We all know how hard it is to get a main stat EM artifact sometimes. When you want it, you can't get it. When you don't want it, you will get it. Uh, that's, how, just, that's just how it always happens. So of course, if you like EM to begin with, go for it. Always play what you like. I always want to say this, always play what you like. I do the math to help people see the damage, the figures, the comparison, which artifacts to use, which weapons to use. But end of the day, for that specific character itself, you only play that character you should only play that character if you like the character. If you if you are playing a meta character that you don't like, how will you enjoy the game? Other than the meta character character being able to clear things faster. I I don't know. So for me personally, this is what I always say, play what you like. Okay, by the way, I just want to give one more point. If you really like the cooldown reduction from 4-piece Thundering Fury like I do, but if under the if conditions stated above here, sorry, above here, 
you can consider HP Build 4-Piece Thundering Fury in the Electro Charge Com, obviously. With your animal character being the EM character and your Kokomi being HP and your other Electro characters being the typical crit build. You sacrifice some damage or, or, your heal, or some healing, depending on what was your, or your originally played artifacts. For example, if it's 4-piece HOD, you obviously sacrifice the 45% damage bonus. Or if you're using a 2-piece Tenacity with 2-piece healers, you will be sacrificing some healing. But you get cooldown reduction in return. You get the flexibility of casting her elemental skill. And more, impo more importantly, repositioning her elemental skill as you like. So that's that. I okay, cast on the table. I actually have such a set build too, but it's not really optimized. It's sitting at 37k HP. To me, uh Kokomi should at least be close to 40k HP. So 37k HP is unfortunately a tad too far for my liking, which is the reason why I've not used it yet. And I'm okay with the EM risk, so I am using EM. But if one day comes where we need more healing on Kokomi, I might explore this or this, which is the support set. Okay, so uh, obviously with the typical HP, HP build main stats, which is HP Sense, Hydro Goblet, and Healing Bonus Circlet. Uh, one last thing, I think I mentioned this earlier, but this will be my last Kokomi EM related video. For the sake of my sanity in terms of the testing and my eyesight in terms of the frame analysis because there's just way too many damage figures in that uh in the animal burst and all the runs okay i mean i'm showing you guys only one frame analysis can you imagine how many frame analysis i did in order to have all the different test runs a how should i put it to have the conclusions from all the different test runs so yeah no more for me okay so uh, we'll see what other content we can do and probably by end of this week or early next week we will do a we will start to do math videos for the next coming character Toma okay so thanks everyone for watching I'll see you guys next video and if you like the content remember the video and click subscribe for more uh, if you think my content is helpful you can email help friends please help me share it around as well Alright, bye!